Hi everyone. Today I'm cutting up some rocks, so I thought I'd show you what I was doing. Let me pull the camera a little closer and I'll show you the rocks. My friend Bill just sold me his slab saw and he threw in a bucket of rocks as a bonus. So I'm not sure what all these rocks are, uh, but I think this one's a Montana agate. Not sure what these stripes are back here. That's the first one in the saw though. Here's what I got cut so far. You can see it just sort of looks black on the inside here. Uh, can you see the fracture right along there? Uh, that's causing the slabs to break in half, so they're coming out in two pieces. Kind of have to look from behind. So there's a, it's dark, but then it's got this lighter area through the middle with those little speckles in it. Really cool looking. Isn't that neat? And then here's that the end cut. Cool stuff. All right, next, I'm gonna cut this one. I don't know what this is, but there's. I guess I like it this way better. There's these little dendrites all through it. Uh, looks really, really cool. So if you know what this is, make sure you let me know in the comments. Off to the saw it goes. Rock number two is cut up and it looks awesome. There it is. Uh, those dendrites in there are just really, really cool. I tried a flashlight behind this one and you can't really see much. I can see a little bit right in there. I'll have to turn the lights off and show you, but it's not like the other ones. Actually, I think up in here, yeah, there's some light that shows through up there and down there, but the white part is a little bit there on the right, see it? But so cool. Yeah, it looks like little plants coming up there. All right. Get some close-ups of this for you. Okay, let's move on to our next rock. So, that one's done for now. Next one is this. And I don't know if this is just jasper or if it's banded iron formation. It kind of looks like banded iron formation. So, this one on the left is banded iron formation. And uh, they definitely look similar. I got out a magnet. I wasn't sure, I didn't, never check banded iron formation to see if a magnet would stick. But it sticks very well. And it does not stick to this one at all. Just slides right off. So, I don't know what it is, but it's going in the saw. I really got one slab taken off of this. Uh, there was an end cut, but it dropped down into the saw oil, I think. I can't find it in there anywhere. I kind of dug around the oil, but I think I'll find it when I clean out the saw. I thought these little Gray spots are interesting. Looks like they might be metallic. And the next one I'm going to cut is right here. It appears to be maybe a moss agate of some sort. It looks agatey in there. Like chalcedony in there. Should be interesting to see what it looks like when we get inside of it. I got the first slice off of that rock, but I'm not going to show you the cut side yet because I want to talk to you about something else first. Uh, this is the rock that I cut, and you can see that I've got it glued to a 2x4 now. Uh, that's because when you clamp this in the saw, you need enough to grab onto with the, the vise or the clamp in the saw. And I was able to just get one slice off of this one. So normally when I glue these to a 2x4, that way I can, I can grab this with the vise, I use just wood glue. Um, I don't use exterior wood glue because if you use exterior wood glue, you can never get it off again. Uh, but if you use interior or the, the kind of in-between, the water-resistant stuff, you can soak this in water. It takes about a week or two and then it releases from the 2x4. So I'm impatient and waiting a week or two 
wasn't that much fun. So I just bought a gallon of this stuff. It's called water glass or sodium silicate. And from what I've heard, it works a little bit better than glue and that it releases, I think like overnight. I haven't really tried it much yet, but that's what I've got this one glued on here with. Uh, it's kind of runny. I thought it was gonna be thicker than it is. So it's a little bit bad that way. Um, I'm just putting it on with a stick, kind of like a honey dipper right now. So I gotta find a bottle to put it in. Uh, but once I get this figured out, uh, this might be my preferred method to use, so we'll see. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to take this out and clamp it in the saw, and I think I'll show you the saw while I'm out there. This is my new Lortone LS10 saw. So the rock just goes in here. In this case, my 2x4 goes in there. You just tighten down these wing nuts. Oil's a little bit dirty because I've been using it. And then this just slides forward. Uh, there's a crank down here, so this moves back and forth. So after I make one cut, I can turn the crank and the whole vise just goes to the left a little bit. So uh, move this forward into the blade. Uh, the one thing you gotta be careful of on this saw, my, my old saw was an ST10, which is an older model of this. If you just put this down like that, the oil drips out. Uh, my other one, I could just drop it down, it was fine. This one, you gotta push it in, make sure it's behind there. I've made that mistake a few times. So you just turn it on here. And this little chain is hooked up to the vise. And as it moves through the saw that way, it pulls on the chain and turns it off when it's done. But it's a lot quieter than my old saw. My old saw was getting really, really loud. It's down in the basement, because I'm gonna do some work on it. Um, probably got to change the bearings, and uh, on, on the other one, the pulleys end up going bad, and I had to change the pulleys, and that made it quieter last time. You can hear it's starting to cut now, but the other one, you couldn't hear yourself talk over top of it. All right, so I'll just come back in uh, 20 minutes or half an hour, and that'll be cut, and I'll move it over and cut another slab at that time. All right, I think I messed up. I'm supposed to keep the best for last, and I think I might have just done the best second to last. So check this out. This stuff is really cool. Get it wet, maybe it'll show up a little bit better. So if we shine a light from behind, you can see some of that stuff in there really well. Isn't that cool? Uh, look at this one. Oops, better without the light. Here's the cut side. That's just super cool stuff. So here's the board, and I only soaked this for maybe a couple hours, and then I was impatient and I tried to pry it off and I broke it. I left that little piece behind, uh, but look at the little piece. This is super thin. This is maybe a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. But look, you can you can see right through it. I think the light's gonna be too bright on this one if I go off from the side here. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And some people make fun of me for liking rocks. They don't know what they're missing. This is awesome. All right, we've got one more rock. I believe this one is Wonderstone. Not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like. So I'll go cut that one up and I'll be right back. All right, I got this cut. Uh, the end had kind of a dip in the middle, so this came off in two pieces. That was your, the end cut. But look at the inside of this one. That is so cool. Not only do you have the banding going this way, but you've got these stripes going this way. Those are not saw marks. They kind of look like saw marks, but it's completely smooth across there. But look how it kind of cut right through the, the red banding. It's fun. Little speckles down here. I like that part. I thought I might be disappointed after the last one, but I'm not. It was fun stuff. Hey, I'm going to put a playlist of other slabbing videos here, so if you want to look at more rocks being slabbed, I think the rest of them are all Michigan rocks. 
Check that out, and I'll see you next time.